that's really about the only problem these have. Now, I have seen on some of the newer manufactured Portuguese assembled guns, I've seen them break little chips in the areas off of the uh, actual bolt body. Um, the old Belgian guns, for some reason, seem to hold up better and don't do that. But the biggest problem these Belgian guns have, these early guns, is this gas system locking up. Now, you have in your receiver here, in your cylinder, I should say, a little roll pin. What this roll pin does, it rides in a slot on the piston here. It rides right in here. What that's doing is keeping that piston from rotating. That's important because on the other side of your piston here, you'll see this slot. This is where this comes in alignment, in alignment with the hole in your barrel, the gas port. The gas comes down into this piston. That's what drives the piston to the rear. So on the early guns, you need to uh, polish the uh, cylinder a little bit. And to do that, there's, this roll pin needs to come out of there. If they're easy to lose and they're small. I try to not lose them, but put your thumb over the back and drive that little roll pin out and see if we lost it. So there it goes. Very small little part. Now, what that means, you can now get in there and I just use, oh, you can use a drill bit with a piece of dowel rod, maybe wrap some memory cloth around it. Don't want to take a lot out of this cylinder, but you want to polish it enough that uh, your piston will slide in out of there real easy. Um, this one, um, I haven't really polished any on the cylinder. It's just the cylinder's not bad. Piston's real cruddy. But, but you want that piston to slide in and out of there freely. That's very critical. Now, that's really about all I can show you. And I might go back through the reassembly process on this because there are some things that, uh, you know, once you get it out of the gun, and there again, we're going to be bluing this gun, finishing the wood, we're going to restore it back so it looks new. Uh, while you got the thing out, you know, uh, get this crud and grease and grime out of there. This one's dirtier than most of them. They usually aren't that bad. Uh, put your, uh, your, your timing piece here. Actually, it has a little pin that it swivels on. It'll fall right out of there for you. The only thing that holds that in place is this uh, bolt cover. And to put that bolt cover on, you just kind of roll it on the one side, just tap it on. And if all is going well, it should just pop right back into place. Now, for some reason, this one, of course, being as I'm trying to show you something, it's, it's not going on. There it went, popped on. Now, to reassemble this gun, pull your bolt head forward, get your, get your timing piece down, and just lay your bolt assembly in the receiver from the rear. Just let it slide down in there. There again, kind of bring it back to the rear, which will drive your dust cover forward. <clears throat> then, slide your uh, operating handle back on. There's, you kind of see the slot and a cutout in the, the uh, uh, where the dust cover is here. Get that out of your way, then you can see how this, this, this will just rotate right in. And it'll just snap into place. Drive it back to the rear and that'll lock it in place. There's your operating handle back in. The next part of the reassembly, um, I'm not going to put our little roll pin back in. I'm going to leave it out because I'm going to go ahead and break this gun down for a reboot. This gun, we didn't really talk about this much, it's one of the rustiest guns I have ever seen. It's going to lose, let's see if I get a little light, might be too much. It's going to lose a lot of engraving. Uh, we're going to have to re engrave it. It has a lot of pitting just everywhere. When we polish this gun, we're going to put filler screws in these holes so they don't get funneled out. Um, the rear sight's lost and the man wants a new one. They're really rare and hard to find. I'm not sure I can find them. Another thing he would like to have is a, a, um, oh, a cover, a bead cover, ramp cover. Um, sight hood, I should say. They're scarce as hands teeth too. I don't think I'm going to be able to find one of those. But to reassemble the gun, put your bolt in. Uh, next thing I would do is, um, there again, this is my new action spring. Go ahead and put your uh, uh, inertia block in place. Replace this buffer if it's broken. Uh, I've got them. I don't know if Browning's got them. He should have. Browning Parts Department. Put all this back in place. And it just goes in like so. And then put your uh, piston back in. Now, there again, this roll pin's out of there. I'm going to leave it out. But uh, when you put your piston back in, line it up so that the roll pin goes through that little slot and holds that piston in position like it should. And just go ahead and 
slide this right back into your guide rod here. Then go ahead and put your regulator back in. There again, I won't totally reassemble this. This is just kind of informational purposes here. Then, you're kind of back into shape there. Go ahead and put your action rods in. Your action uh, rails. Um, they go on this little pin here on the inertia block. These are really a very simple gun. That's what makes them so good. And lock your uh, action rod into your bolt. The slots, these these uh, things right here go lock into the bolt. And then put your uh, support rods in. And then you're you're getting there. You're just about together. I have one here. It's not quite there. It is down in position. All right. Slide your support rail in. Now, put your trigger group back in. Uh, you know, I'm going to yank this all down later. I'm not, we're not going to get into this trigger group. There's really no need to really for you to ever take it apart other than, you know, scrubbing it out and blowing it out real good. Um, just not much need in it, so we're not going to get into that too much. Just uh, slide your trigger group back into your receiver from the rear. And then... To uh, put your stock back on, it's a little tricky, uh, but not too serious. Uh, put your stock bolt plate kind of lays. In fact, the, one of the easiest ways: put your screw your screw into it a little bit, and just kind of lay it back in position in the receiver, pushing in forward. Get your uh, get your this rail is slid back and is in the way. You got to get that out of your way. Get that support rail out of the way. Then, kind of put this plate in like so, and then rotate it up, and it'll lock into a slot in the top of the receiver. And then kind of bring your trigger group back against it, and that's going to hold that plate up in the top of the receiver. And that's where you want it, to, uh, so you can refit your stock. And uh, you'll have to, it's best to have it in a vise. I'm just kind of doing things here out of the vise because... Well, it's just easier to do so, to show you. What you do then is you put this kind of into position. And like I say, you almost need about three hands. And I hold this uh, trigger group back against that uh, tang piece, stock bolt plate. And that keeps it in position. Then you can put your stock on and snug it down. And uh, you're ready to go. Now, I got it. Okay, we're back in the position. We'll show you this stock later on. This this thing is really rough. Oh, it was a beater. Uh, this thing is all beat the heck. Look at all that. It's going to have to be recut on the checkering. I've repaired, as I said, some bad chipping back here in the stock. We do that with super glue and sawdust. That's the best way to repair those chips. Um, I have plugged a swivel hole here. We're going to dress that down, paint that all out, and hide it, put a new swivel in. That'll all look like new again. It's uh, this this gun was on the verge of needing a new stock. It was very close to it, but we're gonna salvage what's there because these early Type One stocks are scarce as hen's teeth. You can't find them anywhere. Basically, you have to have them special made. Now, put your form back on there again. The critical thing is make sure you pull back the uh, uh, action uh, and get that out of your way and slide things back on like so. And there's your form back in place. And somebody needs to go turn that phone off. It should have been left off while we were doing videos. We're not professionals here. Anyway, there's your uh, form back in place. And then, just go ahead and put your uh, uh, swivel stud back in place. And tighten it down with a uh, uh, crescent wrench and line your slot up so it goes crosswise. And you're good to go. And that's basically all you really need to look for in these BARs. I pointed out the little glitches they they have in the little bugs they have in. They're not much. They they really are a very reliable gun, uh, and uh, most of the models are pretty accurate. And they're just pretty much an all-around good gun. The Belgian models, uh, I kind of prefer them. They do have that weakness in the gas system, like we showed you. Now these things blow out a lot of extra gas. You'll notice on a a, a Magnum model, you got these slots here. That's to vent out that excess gas that's going to blow out through your regulator. They don't have that in the uh, standard calibers. They don't have these little cutouts or slots here. That's so they can vent gas out. Uh, 
I like these uh, guns. They, they have the biggest weakness is that uh, unplated uh, gas cylinder. Uh, the Portuguese models are pretty good. Uh, they have some weaknesses here and there, but for the most part, I kind of prefer the old Belgium guns. Uh, and you'll be okay as long as you take that gas system out and clean it every year or two. Um, that's just kind of critical, and that'll keep them working. Because without that, they'll lock up on you and freeze up on that piston, and you'll be down and out. So anyway, we've gone through this BAR. Now, uh, also on this video, we're going to be getting in a BLR, a lever action uh, gun here in a few days. We're going to go ahead and get a video going on that. We can show you some of the things to watch for in that. But anyway, this is the uh, that's kind of the lowdown on the Browning BAR. Uh, we'll show you this gun later after it's been all refinished and engraved and blued and anodized, and it'll look like a new gun. So uh, there we have the BAR rifle.